So here we are. Welcome to um, another interview with my friend Neil McCoy Ward. Um, some of you know who he is. I'm going to put the link to um, everything that you need to know about him underneath this video. And um, yes, today we're going to be talking about some finance sort of stuff and sort of prepping related things. Also, um, about how we see the world or what's been going on, especially from 2020. And um, Neil's almost at nearly half a million YouTube subscribers, which is crazy. Um, he's been offering really sound um, advice and he runs really, really good financial courses as well, which is brilliant. So without further ado, we're going to bring Neil in right now. How you going, Neil? Uh, all good. Thanks for that intro. That was, that was nice. No problem at all, sir. So, um, yeah, let's get going. Now, um, I want to say just briefly what happened to me. I was um, literally having a break off YouTube because it gets a bit crazy. And I know you've done the same sort of thing Yeah. Um, yeah. in the Cotswolds and um, went into um, a really nice um, eatery, as it were, and um, just bought some drinks, went to pay, and it was card only. And... As soon as I saw this tiny little sign by the till, I took my debit card and I hid it out of the way and I got cash out and it was a big free for all. And so much so, um, we didn't know what to do. Luckily, there was another customer who um, offered to change my £10 note into pound coins and I gave them £6, which <laughs> roughly covered about a 60p tip. But it yeah. was just crazy. Have you had similar things from where you are and where you've been? Well, it's not really, see where I live on, I, I moved from the UK over to the Isle of Man. And it is, a, I don't think there's a single place here that's ca uh, card only because it's wow. a little bit more backwards. So people love their cash. And, you know, I don't know how many of the businesses are a little bit dodgy. Some of the smaller businesses, <laughs> right? So they love their cash and, and everything like that. But yeah, I was in, I was in London may it was in the end of july and i always have cash with me because i prefer to use cash and i yeah. couldn't spend even one pound of the cash not oh. a pound the whole three or four days i was there i couldn't and by the way do you know why i was there did you hear the story about about the, the van and everything yes i remember that that's crazy that was coventry in wasn't it three hours of being off the ferry with my new van it got stolen I don't know how they got in because it had deadlocks. It had like the top locks you can get. Um, I mean, it was crazy. It was gone within a few minutes. So they, I don't know how they did it. They got in, they stole the van. Uh, police didn't even care. <laughs> I'll tell yeah, you that one. Yeah. about this. I was, I thought it was really strange because you hear about all the, you know, misgendering, which is now a, a hate crime or something. You can get prison sentence for that. And it's a, I think it's an 82% conviction rate, something ex exceptionally high. You know mm. what the conviction rate is on carjacking, where you carjack someone or you rob someone's vehicle? You know what it is? No idea. It's half a percent. What? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. So it's a 2% prosecution rate, but of that, it's only 25% um, get convicted. It's insane. <sighs> Do you know so, what? I, I actually looked into this just briefly. Um, I think it was around Christmas time last year. And at September last year, the magistrates' courts in England and Wales was 370,000 cases behind. That was back yeah. then. So you can almost imagine how crazy it's going to be trying to pin a conviction on stuff like that. Yeah, there's, there's just no... For me, I've sort of... I just gave up hope around the uk um turning this whole thing around you know i was trying to warn everyone of what was coming at my great reset video way before everyone was talking about the the great reset this was a long years back now and <clears throat> people thought i was a, an absolute psychopath <laughs> <laughs> this guy is nuts he's got some wild imagination <clears throat> but yeah do you know that of all those forecasts in that video only one is left to happen, and that's the launch of the CBDC. That's oh, it. Wow. Which, yeah. you know, you probably know that the BBC did a, a documentary type thing about all of us, and I was named in there as this crazy conspiracy theorist talking about the Great Reset, even though 
it's a real thing, you know, and all this sort oh, of, yeah. you know, craziness. But yeah, that's why I was in London, getting back to the point, was my van was stolen. I was driving. I, I got the ferry to Liverpool and then I was driving south, just stopped off in Coventry and the van was just was just stolen. The police didn't even bother. This guy came out, you know, I think it was, I don't even know how many hours later it was. And he said, I said, you know, are you going to find the van and everything? He said, oh, we looked on the traffic cams. They changed the plates right away. So your van's gone. He said, it's probably, uh, he said, by tomorrow, it'll be halfway to Europe or something like that. And I was thinking, no, it won't. What, you think there's a ship just waiting there? To, to I mean, it didn't make any sense what he said, but <laughs> I, get, I get the concept. He said, just claim from your insurance and, you know, go and do something else. Yeah. Because, Here's you know, a crime number and good luck sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. Exactly. And then if you call them, by the way, if you call them and say, oh, hey, have you, is there an update? They act like you're bothering them. Like, if there was an update, we'd call you. Why are you calling us? You know, we're very busy. Um, That's terrible. Do you know, I was telling my partner this this morning, and she was dumbfounded. I mean, I think it was, what, two days or so from the crime, and I would be the same. I would be phoning them probably every day after that to see, yeah. because it's obvious you just get that feeling if you didn't contact them, they're never going to contact you. And it's mm -hmm, that bad mm -hmm. now, isn't it, really? Yeah. And the insurance company are absolute scandalous as well. Absolutely mm. scandalous. They offered me half the value of the van. It was quite new as well, wasn't it? It wasn't an old banger it, sort of thing. Was it, it, was, it wasn't brand new. It was used, approved. It had like 35,000 miles on the clock. Right? Mm. But they... They so the value's already gone out of it. It's not like you know you drive it off the forecourt, 30, 40 percent's gone. No, I already bought it and it was in you know perfect condition. And they said, Oh, well, mm, we think it's only worth half what you insured it for. And I said, No, I, I bought it three months ago. Here's the invoice. And they said, Wow, well, we you know, you can appeal it, but it could take up to three months. And I thought, <laughs> this is the scam they're doing, because they know a lot of people that have a van could be a plumber or a tradesman or a builder or whatever, they need that van. So if they sign and accept the half price, that's it, it's done. But if you don't, yeah. it's take three months. So that's the scam that they're, they're pulling. It's almost like a commercial vehicle sort of thing. It's a different um, category, isn't it? So they're, they're aware of this. Yeah. What a scam. Mm -hmm. Lots of people like nowadays especially love the van life thing, love being able to travel, love making it look inconspicuous so you can literally – you know, just park um, on a street overnight and camp and no one would know, you know, that you're camping there. Well, so um, it is a big trend, isn't it? Interestingly, here on the island, you can come over with your camper van, your van. You can pretty much camp wherever. There's no rules like in the UK that says you can't park here overnight, no over overnight parking. You can get a spot overlooking the ocean, which is what a lot of people do. Yeah. 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 Well, why wouldn't you? I mean, yeah. I mean, I I sort of moved from right down south, just outside Portsmouth, um, mm. you know, a heavily urban environment, and then all of a sudden, you know, right at the end of 2021, you know, I'm actually living on a mountain with no one around, mm. um, water supplies, you know, going off grid and all, and it's Good. such a different way of life. I mean, sometimes I go outside and I pinch myself: Is this actually real? Mm. And I'm thinking: Well, if I can do this with very little finances and just just go for it I mean, that's my advice to anyone you know i say the best advice i can give anyone is to do what they can to get out of the urban environment whatever it takes 100 you just do it and then you know you put you force yourself into that situation and then you literally make it up as you go along and i think it's the fear thing which stops people doing that so um yeah it's quite yeah. crazy isn't it, really but it's true it's the only way i can see it doing it yeah, well, I've just bought a new property and it's and the things that I was looking at, the first property I was going to buy was perfect. I mean, it is a prepper's dream property. <laughs> it wasn't it was um, for the size of the property and the land that came with it. It was very low cost because it's in an area where, you know, there isn't really much going on. It's sort of a lot of off grid people, a lot of people that want to be left alone. But it had the sea to the front. It had all farm, uh, you know, fields, grazing, pasture lands right in front of it and a cliff. So you can't get up there, right? If you wanted to, you know, come to ah, the property, good. you'd need yeah. to you'd need mountaineering experience to climb. Or to the other side, there's a ravine. 
So you'd have to, I mean, you have to get drenched going through the water first for, yeah. to get to then get across. And then there was one road all the way in, and the guy was a prepper. He's a South African guy. So his gun room was ridiculous, by the way. Wow. I've never seen anything like it. And there was just one road in, and he had cameras and sensors all the way down. And then to the other side, you could, you know, tab in or hike in or whatever. But you're talking 45 minutes to get in, and then how do you get out sort of thing. So it was a dream property. Yeah, yeah. And that one didn't work out in the end, which was a oh. shame. Couldn't get it yeah. over the finish line because there was a lot of complexities with uh, the government owned a portion of the land and there was this sort of old oh. stone circle, historic stone circle in there. So they needed oh. access to that, which meant I had to give them, you know, the security codes to get through and all this. And I was going, so I've got these people that need to come every once in a while and they want to do tours. I've then got these people from the government that, that want to come on and this land of special scientific interest. I was like, nah, this is not going to, this is not going to work. Yeah. So we went for a different, shame, right? It is, but we went for a different property in the end. And that one's good. It's, um, it's got a well, it's got two really powerful streams either side to the far side of the property. So we won't get flooded out. It's got loads of land for, um, you know, food and stuff, growing food, raising food, and there's at least 100 trees, maybe 200 trees, mature, quite mature. And nice. one of them falls down every time there's a storm, which is which is OK. You just get the chainsaw out and as you would for the next year. Um, but yeah, but yeah I, I agree with you. But I think a lot of people don't have the sort of background that you and I have got have had. So maybe <clears throat> it does take a little bit longer. You see, what will happen is you'll hit the, the tipping point theory, pleasure, pain, et cetera. So people that are comfortable now and they're waiting and saying, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It was like um, a friend of mine. He kept saying, yeah, I know crime's getting worse and I don't know anyone in my street anymore, but uh, it's not too bad. And then one night there was a drive by shooting <laughs> shot right yeah. through his neighbors. Yeah. Um, his neighbor, I don't know what they were doing. Some sort of gang business shot right through and he's got kids and he was like, okay, that's it. That's my tipping point. I'm that's now, a wake-up call right there. I'm out. And, and, and we will see, you know, it's just like Neil Strauss's, um, sorry, Neil Howe's fourth turning cycle. Um, these, thing, these things always come, come around again. So what you'll have is this, you know, the cycle one is your renaissance period. Everything's amazing. Everything's creative. And then we go through the cycles and cycle four is, well, it's what, what was cycle four? The American Civil War was cycle four. World War One was was and World, World War Two both cycle four. Um, the, the collapse of the Roman Empire cycle four. Mm. And I don't think it's alarmist to say that I think we're in cycle four right now. I, I really don't. I think we are in cycle four. Now, does that mean we're going to see a massive biblical collapse? Well, no, not necessarily. But I think we're going to mm. see a collapse of the financial system. I think, and yeah. what that will look like is a reset <clears throat> onto this new CBDC, a dystopian nightmare, where you are not going to be able to do anything once that launches. They're going to have all sorts of, and you've seen it already, the carbon allowances. Yeah. I was trying to book a flight the other day. Oh, are you aware? It flashed in red, a big flashing red thing saying. <laughs> it's oh, starting then, isn't it now? Yeah. yeah. Are you aware this is going to be 13% more CO2? than these ones that says minus 20% CO2, whatever. And I'm like, do I give a... F uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Let me book that flight. And, um, you know, it's just crazy. So I think you're going to see all these carbon allowances. We just saw a law, I don't know if you saw this, the law that's just been passed over last week around a one-year prison sentence, £15,000 fine, if you exceed the energy usage that's going to be passed down soon. Whoa, I did hear about that. Yeah, I saw your video and it's like, it does make you think. And um, I've been saying this for well over a year now. Um, you are going to see prices of everything go up, which you are anyway. And mm -hmm. as I'll say to my subscribers, you know, <clears throat> when you see inflation and they say it's between 9 and 11%, I just laugh because it obviously doesn't include fuel and food. Mm -hmm. And them two things are obviously going up all of the time pretty much yeah so and then you bring into climate change 
um, you know, how much carbon does it cost to create them things that you're buying? And you, at some point soon, over the next three or four years, maybe, you're going to see the prices of, just say you want to go out and buy a TV set. I mean, how many individual components go in that TV set? Mm -hmm. How much energy does it cost to create that whole thing? So, you know, you're going to see a TV set which costs 500 to 5,000 pounds really go up through the roof and people are just not going to be ready for that. So I've always said, get out of the urban environment, go somewhere where you can be self-sufficient and get all of the physical things you think you're going to need now rather than wait until it's too expensive or it's the supply chain goes like we saw in 2020. There's so mm -hmm. many points, isn't there, come into play now? Well, it's also about just simplifying <clears throat> one's life and not getting wrapped up in all the media stuff that, you know, I think I was I was buying a, like a granola bar or whatever they're called yesterday because I was in between meals. I was like, oh, I'm starving. I went into the shop and I bought, you know, this bar. And as I was picking up the bar, I noticed all these magazines, absolute trash. It was like just junk. I said, surely people can't read this stuff, surely. And someone came in and picked one up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is this person, you know, an absolute NPC? They're reading through this thing. <laughs> and I thought, this person's nuts. And then she picked it up and took it to the counter. <clears throat> and I just thought, well, that sums up a lot of people. They're reading all this trash. So they don't really understand, you know, that the <clears throat> the best things in life are, are pretty are, are sim simple things and they're free. It, it's funny because I was always, when I was after the military, I was chasing the money nonstop. I had to be, you know, I had all these big visions and I did get good, good roles and set up companies and stuff. But I realized that at the end of the day, it doesn't really make much difference. You can't take that stuff with you anyway. And most of the enjoyable things, having moved here, it's hard to spend money. I mean, I'm not joking. Mm. Same spend. here. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. Because everyone, <clears throat> the events are, you can walk for miles and just see the most beautiful landscapes. It, it, it breath, or you, you watch my Friday walk and talk, so you, yeah, you, see, yeah. it, you see it all. Beautiful. It's free. You want to drive there and park? It's free. I don't know if there's any paid parking on it. I mean, everything's just free. You want to do some activities. There's activities every weekend. It's free. It's very family orientated. There's a lot of prepping community as well. Sort of the middle and the north of the island is heavy, heavy preppers. Hmm. And yeah. It's pretty much the same here. I mean, I it was, well, some people say purely by chance that all this happened, but that's another deep dive story into manifesting things and literally doing the physical steps towards that to make it happen and it absolutely worked for me i know it's true and intuition is a huge massive thing in that and i ended up in a place called powys in wales now yeah. from research powys is the biggest county in wales with the smallest population but get this the highest gun ownership in the entire uk mm. so for a prepper i've ended up in loads of room no people, beautiful scenery, and lots of guns. I mean, why wouldn't you want to be there rather than, oh, it's in Portsmouth. You know, that's four and a half square miles. Over 250,000 people live there. So you mm. can imagine lots of crime, lots of noise, yeah. traffic, car park, and all of that is just gone. And it's you can actually live now rather than just exist. Exactly. So that's pretty cool well, that you've got down the Isle of Man too as well. Yeah, well, I think it's it's mainly shotguns, isn't it? where you are mm, yeah. yeah well here you can extend that license to look at your smile <laughs> i won't say exactly what i've yeah i won't say exactly but that no. license can extend almost unlimited to, to a certain degree here which is which is yeah, nice yeah. you just got to make sure that you haven't got a criminal record and, and and you're all good you do a bit of training and stuff so. yeah 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 for sure i mean we're, we're both in the military and i remember um, a good friend of mine who'd done SAS selection three times, believe it or not. And we went round to a friend who was a gunsmith just outside London. And it was um, a quintessential cul-de-sac on the suburbs. And you just wouldn't have known. But as you approach this property, um, if you know, you can see everything's bulletproof glass. 
yeah. went in there there's doberman dogs there there's an armory the guy's a section 5 license holder and it's literally everything from muskets up to the latest tech yeah. and there's loads of these places over the uk but people just don't know and it always makes me laugh and we knew must know it as well when our american friends saying oh you guys in the uk have got no guns you just think well really if only you knew the truth i mean you've mm. seen it firsthand too mm. yeah Crazy. yeah and like you know you you went back um earlier when you said about this property being the ideal for preppers i mean from a military sort of um security aspect that seems pretty perfect because you know access points you've got cliff faces big obstacles but yeah only stumbling block was that stone circle and i think the only thing you could have done is to literally just divide the land up give that space maybe sell it to them but you still got people right on the edge of your property whenever and, and mm. stone circles you know you're going to get people coming there at midnight on halloween naked and all this sort of stuff and it's the last thing you want right on your doorstep really it's a shame <laughs> but yeah, yeah, there is a, lot, a bit of weird stuff like that going on um, over here. There's a lot of history, a lot of... And you know what's fascinating as well? Whenever I, I hear historians talking about, you know, history and, and, and it, I always think these people don't really understand or know true history. What they yeah. know is what they've read in the books, what they've learned at a university or gone through these, you know propaganda camps and other things shall we say but they don't really understand true history as soon as you bring something up that is outside of the norm that they can't explain and there's a lot of this stuff coming through now that can't be explained through carbon dating through um, other things it just can't be explained they just sort of close off and they yeah. can't they don't want to talk about it and there's a lot like that here as well so i went to this history talk about about this these buildings and i said there's the, what i what i find strange is that you've got these stone buildings and then all of a sudden you've got these modern buildings but surely there should be there should be other things in between where's all that and they say oh um, i don't know and i said well maybe something happened here maybe there was some sort of an event that happened on the island because where's all the history between this period and then it goes back to that where's all this you know, there's a good few hundred years that just isn't, I wouldn't say it's missing, but people have slotted things in that don't really make sense. And yeah. we see that a lot in the world as well. If you've ever watched the documentaries on the world fairs and um, all these other things about the electricity and yeah. Yeah. all the wires, you know, what, what happened to all of Nikolai Tesla's um, inventions and how did he transport the electricity between the towers and stuff like that. There's a lot of things and all this old black and white footage where you see tr history and people say it's fake. Well, no, it's not fake. It's obviously real videos. You can see it's real videos, but um, there's a lot we don't really understand about the world. And that's why I always think about the world in cycles and you yeah. just got to understand the history of the cycle. And when you know you're going into that fourth cycle, you need to get away from these city zones just like the Roman Empire, one of my favorite. Actually, I've got a full set. Gosh, I don't even know. I must have 100, 200 books on the Roman Empire. And I find it quite fascinating, the final days of the empire and how that really collapsed. And we're seeing those same... Very similar, isn't it now? Yeah. 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 And it's the same in, like... in Washington, isn't it? With Capitol Hill and stuff and how that's laid out. And yeah. it, it pretty much boils down to three places. Uh, you've got like, um, where is it? The Vatican, that's its own separate state. Um, the city inside London, its own state. Yeah. And, and indeed, Washington, D.C. So you've got UK's financial, Rome, or the Vatican is going to be religious. And Washington is pretty much war. So you've got those triad, um, as it were. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty much running the show. And not many people just get it. They? they don't bother looking into those things. Mm. But like you say, they're their own separate entities. They're not governed by rules and regulations like the outside us, which are us, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Pretty yeah. crazy stuff, dude. But yeah, um, so um if you guys want to see more of this interview, there's gonna be all of that sort of information coming out on the website. So you guys take care. Thanks for watching. Stay funky.
。はい。